Hello everyone. As we know, we have been studying this subject techniques for ground improvement, which is also called as ground improvement technique. So our today topic is improvement of cohesive soil. How we can improve the cohesive soil? You can see here cohesive soil such as soft clay have large void ratio and high water content. Ground improvement is required to reduce the void ratio and the water content to increase its shear strength so that bearing capacity could be increased and the compressivity to be decreased. So this is our target in the improvement of cohesive soil. We have to reduce the void ratio so that we can increase the strength of the soil by bearing capacity, increasing the bearing capacity and reducing the settlement. So the different methods are there which are normally used in the practice to improve the cohesive soil. The first method is pre-compression, sand drains, weak drains and stone columns. As you know, we have already studied about the stone column. So in this lecture, we are not going to discuss about the stone column. So only three, call, three topics we shall uh, discuss. First one is the pre-compression, which is also called a pre-loading, sand drains, weak drains. You see, sand drains and weak drains, both comes under the categories of vertical drains, right? So let us begin the pre-compression. Pre-compression, which is also called a pre-loading, Normally, pre-compression or pre-loading, wherever we are going for any construction at the cohesive soil, that is the soft soil actually, it is a weak soil. So in that case, what we have to think first, the magnitude of the pre-load pressure ranges from 1.2 to 1.3 times the actual structure pressures. You can see this is the ground where a, a structure has to be constructed. So this uh, part has been preloaded, right? Which is also called a surcharge field. So what I'm trying to say here that suppose a structure pressure is 25 ton per meter square. So what should be the pressure due to the preloading? That will be equal to 1.2 to 1.3 times of the 25 ton per meter square, right? That is the preload pressure should be 1.2 to 1.3 times more than the actual structure pressure, which has to be constructed at the site, proposed site. So normally earth fill is used as a pre-compression materials or is, which is also called as surcharge fields or preloading materials. So here, as I told you, pre-compression is also known as pre-loading or surcharging. It is also called a surcharging or surcharge field. The method of pre-compression of soil is used for soft clays and silty soil. So you can see this area has already been pre-compression uh, pre or pre-loading. That means surcharge field has already been made here to improve the bearing capacity of the soft soil. Right? In pre-compression, the ground is covered with a temporary surcharge before construction. This is the construction method. We can say this is the pre-compression method. How we normally go for pre-compression at the proposed site. So in pre-compression, the ground is covered with a temporary surcharge, right? A surcharge field of 3 to 10 meter height is raised on the ground to cause pre-compression of the soil at construction site. So the height can be raised as per our design load or de uh, design structural loads, three to 10 meter height. The height may vary from three to 10 meter for surcharge field. The surcharge field should be extended beyond the perimeter of the site of the construction by at least 10 meter on all sides so that uniform compression of the soil at this site of construction occur. What does it mean? Suppose we want to go for construction uh, at the site 
which dimension is 20 meter by 30 meters. So in that case, 10 meter extra, right? 10 meter, at least 10 meter from all sides, we have to cover the surcharge field, right? Which is nothing but earth fields so that we can get the informed compressions. Thus, definitely the surcharge field is removed before the construction of the structure on the ground begins. So before construction, we have to remove this well. Once the area where we have to go for the construction is compressed, right? We have to remove this well, then we have to start the construction. Next, we can see this uh, pre-compression or it, uh, it depends upon the, the pre-compression or pre-loading depends upon the principle of compression which we can explain with the help of consolidation theory. Consolidation theory already we have studied in geotechnical engineering. See the effect of loading, unloading and reloading of this file is explained by this figure. We can see this figure this y-axis void ratio and x-axis effective stress, right? Log of effective stress, sigma bar, log of effective stress. So the virgin, virgin swell that is, uh, that is called as uh, the swell which is used for the first time. That means no any construction has been carried out on that swell earlier. That's why it is called as virgin swell. Raw swell, right? AB indicates the decrease in the void ratio of the swell during initial loading. What does it mean? What is going to happen once we are going to preload? Once we are going to load the swell at the construction site, that we can indicate by AB, which is called as loading. AB indicates the loading, right? The curve BC shows the increasing void ratio during unloading. So, whenever we are going to remove this file, right, that is surcharge field, that, that can be indicated by BEC graph. Okay. So, unloading, AB indicates the loading, right. So, the curve CFD indicates the decrease in the void ratio when the swile is reloaded. Reloaded means we have first we have gone for the AB indicates the pre-compressions. Then we have removed this file that is called as unloading. And once you begin the construction at the preloaded site, that is called as reloading, right? So CFD it is indicated by CFD. But what we observed in this case. The decrease in the void ratio during reloading CFD is much less than the decrease in the void ratio during initial loading AB. So definitely the CFD, the void ratio in case of CFD will be less than the AB. Why? Because the AB means already the soil has been loaded, right? So already it has been consolidated. After that, again, we are going to, uh, for the construction. Uh, that, is, that is going to be indicated by CFD, which is also called a reloading. So definitely the void ratio will be less. CFD, the void ratio along the CFD will be less compared to AB. So further, we can conclude here, pre-compression or pre-loading is indicated by AB. That is also called a loading. Removal of swell. Unloading, BEC, either we, once you are going to remove this file after consolidation, then it comes, uh, th that is indicated by BEC. And construction of foundation is indicated by reloading, that is CFD. Okay, so the consolidation theory, how it uh, simulate the preloading or pre-compression, we have seen by this graph. Now, so what is going to happen? What benefit we are going to get once preloading takes place? So compressibility of this file is decreased. Settlement of a structure will also decrease. 
shear strength of the soil will increase and hence bearing capacity of the soil will also be improved. In fact, pre-compression soil behaves as an over-consolidated soil. Why we say over-consolidated soil? You see, in case of consolidation chapter, we have already uh, studied the definition of normally consolidated soil, over-consolidated soil. So let us uh, uh, define one second. What is normally consolidated soil? <coughs> normally consolidated soil is one which had not been subjected to a pressure greater than the pre-present existing pressure. You can consider here AB, the virgin soil is nothing but is a normally consolidated soil. And <coughs> a soil is said to be over consolidated if it had been subjected in the past to a pressure in excess of the present pressure. So that is here reloading that means CFD indicates the over consolidated soil because we are going to apply the pressure more than the present pressures. So CFD indicates the over consolidated soil and AV indicates the normally consolidated soil. So this is about your pre-compression or pre-loading. But we have to also know what are the advantages and disadvantages of these methods. What are the advantages? It is quite simple and convenient. The conventional earth moving equipment can be used for raising the surcharge field. The method is inexpensive if the required soil for the preloading or surcharge field as is available nearby the construction site. So in that case, it will be beneficial or it will be uh, inexpensive, economical. Pre-compression ensures uniformity of improvement of the ground. Informally, compression will take place, informed compression. That means differential settlement will not be there. The progress of consolidation of this file can easily be monitored. Once you are going to preload this file using the surcharge film, we can also monitor how much settlement is going to take place as the time passes. So by using the settlement placed, plates with the piezometers. What are the disadvantages? Time of consolidation is quite long. This is one of the major drawbacks I would like to tell you. That pre-compression takes lots of time, even several years also. Suppose you want to construct this, uh, uh, the, uh, the structure at the soft soil or at the proposed site at the earliest. In that case, this method will not be suitable because it is going to take a lot of time in ground improvement, right? So a structure cannot be delayed that long. Other methods, uh, construction, uh, methods of construction are adopted. The methods require a large space around the site of construction to raise surcharge field. If the surcharge, uh, suppose the site is in congested area, it is very difficult to do this work. So this uh, is not possible for a congested area. Suppose your site is located or situated in a congested area where lots of houses are there. In that case, this, this will not be suitable. The method is expensive. If suitable material for surcharge field is not easily available at low cost, right? Definitely it will be uh, expensive if the material is not easily available at the cheaper rate. So this is uh, about your advantage and disadvantage of the pre-compression or preloading. Now we shall proceed for the next topic that is vertical drains. As I told you that sand drains and weak drains also comes under the vertical drains. And they, these are categorized by the two ways, sand drains and weak drains. So first we shall begin the sand drains which is also called as sand piles. See, as we have seen in the previous slide, the pre-compression or pre-loading method. What it said that, the main disadvantage of the pre-compression method is that it takes very long time. Sand rains accelerate pre-compression process and reduce the time of 
consolidation. That means sand drains acts as a catalyst, right? So the compression is going to improve, right? Once you are going to use the sand drains along with the surcharge fuel or at the time of preloading, then compression will be increased. It will accelerate the pre-compression process. Pre-compression or preloading process will be accelerated once we are going to construct these sand drains, right? So this, let, let us see this picture. This, uh, this, this, the dotted line indicates the sand drains. Uh, this is, this is without the uh, sand drains, the vertical drains or the sand drains, whatever you can say. So the, 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 this is without sand drains, and this is with the sand drains. So let us see further. Because of the provision of sand drains in soil deposit, the length of drainage path is reduced. So once we are going to construct the sand drains, what is going to happen? The path of the drainage is going to be minimized or reduced, right? You can see this horizontal flow of water, the pore water pressure is going to be released and the water is going in horizontal as well as in vertical directions. We shall also discuss in details in the next slide about this figure. So water flows horizontally to sand drains. Water, you can see that these are, these are the arrows. Water, which is uh, uh, available in the pore, uh, pore space, is going to move in the vertical direction. Then it will take the path of the sand drains and come in the uh, but in come uh, along the vertical directions, right? Hence the time reduced to achieve a certain degree of consolidation is considerably reduced, right? So that benefit is there. So how we can construct the sand, sand drains at the site? A sand drain is constructed by driving a casing and removing the swell from casing by air hogal. So this is the surcharge fill. So th these are called as sand drains, right? So how we have to uh, construct it, how we have to install it? We have to drive a casing, right? After driving the casing, we shall remove this swell from the casing that because in the casing pipe swell is also there that swell we have to remove by the auger once swell is removed till the required depth what we shall do we shall fill the casing with the suitably graded sand we shall fill the, this casing uh, with the sand and then casing is gradually withdrawn leaving the sand in the ground. This casing, we shall remove it, we shall withdraw it, and the sand will remain in the ground itself. So, a number of such drains, as per our requirements, we can construct at the site, right? And uh, this, see, this is, this is called a sand blankets, right? So, above the sand drains, a layer of sand blankets is also provided. Above that, surcharge fill is there. So what is going to happen? Once you construct the sand drains, the horizontal movement of water, because the surcharge fill is also causing pressure in downward direction. So whatever the water is there inside the soil, soft soil, will come, it will move horizontally. And then along with the path of the sand drains, it will move vertically. So horizontal and vertical movement of water will take place. And after that, this sand drains also acts as a drainage. So again, horizontally, the water will come out. So this, this uh, sand drain uh, blanket is called a granular blanket, blanket or a sand blanket. Above that surcharge is there. And these are the sand drains. So what are the typical design parameters? Let us see. The radius of sand drains normally varies from 0.2 to 0.3 meter. A spacing in between the two sand drains varies from 2 to 8, 5 meter. Depth of sand drains in embankment. See, the sand drains uh, can be utilized for various purposes. We shall also see. So in the case of uh, embankments, it can go up to 3 to 30, 35 meter. The depth may vary up to 3 to 35 meters. And the sand, sand blanket, the, this is the granular blanket or the sand blanket. Its thickness varies from 0.6 to 1 meter, right? 
this, uh, this the, actually this sand drain is going to connect all these vertical drains, all the vertical sand drains, we can say, right? So now once uh, we can see here, on the sand blanket is surcharge line is placed, right? The surcharge load is generally in the form of a dumped square or surcharge fill. The drainage occurs in the horizontal and vertical directions as uh, also I told you in the previous slide. That means the water which exists in the soil will move horizontally and take the path of this vertical sand drains and ultimately it will come to the origin, uh, horizontal uh, sand blanket. It will go out from the horizontal sand blanket. The, uh, the, this what happens normally, the sand drains accelerate the process of dissipation of excess pore water pressures available in this soil, soft soil, created by the surcharge. Surcharge is putting the load in downward direction. And this is also going to accelerate. The sand drain is also going to accelerate. Thus, the rate of consolidation is considerably increased. <clears throat> so, sand drains have been used in practice for a long time. It is very old methods. The main disadvantage of sand drain is that they are quite, ex in, quite expensive. It is not economical. Recently, new methods have been developed to reduce of the cost of the construction, which we are going to discuss in the next slide. That is nothing but weak drains, right? The sand drains are mainly used in consolidation of extensive area of loading, such as airport runways, road embankments or railway embankments, large storage areas and reservoir, etc. So now it is many applications. I think it has been used for since long back, long time, right? But as it is written, it is quite expensive. So this method has been substituted by the weak drain. The sand drain has been substituted by the weak drain. So now we shall discuss about the weak drains. So here you can see it is written there because sand drains are quite expensive to construct. The geotechnical engineers have recently developed weak drains which are also called as PVD, prefabricated vertical drains, band drains, or a steep drain, right? It, it is in the form of a strip. We shall see. It is prefabricated geotextile fiber wrapped plastic strips with modeled channels. The weak drains are usually of the shape of a strip about 100 millimeter wide and 5 meter thick. You can see this is yes, in the form of a strip and in the form of a rollers, rolled, right? It has been kept here. It has also been installed at this site here, you can see. It has, we shall also discuss in the next slide how it is installed, installed at this site. So you can see uh, it has already been installed here and these are the uh, weak drains uh, in the form of a, a strip which is having the thick, uh, thick uh, wide width. This is the width, 100 millimeter, and thickness of the strip is 5 millimeter. It acts as a drainage path to take pore water out of soft compressible soil that consolidates faster under a constant surcharge load. That means at the time of pre-compression, pre the sand drains or weak drains, both can be utilized at the site to accelerate the drainage process, to, uh, to accelerate the consolidations caused by the preloading, caused, caused by the surcharge fields. So now we can see here, at the top of the weak drains, there is a header, drains to surcharge the poor water. The header drain is nothing but, it is the sand blanket or granular blanket, right? These are the weak drains. This, uh, the, the, this is the thickness which we have already discussed in the case of sand drains. Is, the sand is a spread in the form of a head drain, right? So for installation of the weak drain in clay, what, how it is installed, the weak drain, how it is installed? You can see here also installation is going on. You can see in this figure. For installation of the weak drains in clay deposit, a tube is commonly used. This is the tube, right? A steel tube. Weak drains is held in the tube. Here you can also see in this figure, in the form of a uh, roll, weak drains are available, right? 
in the form of a strip a strip or it in the form of a band right and it is connected with this pipe so what is going to happen you can it is you can see here the weak drain is held in a tube and the tube is pushed into the soft clay deposit leaving it up to the design depth so it is pushed inside the earth inside the ground and it is left up to that depth that means up to the design depth as per your requirement you can push inside the earth and leave behind it there itself after that you can cut you can see many at many location it has been uh, installed and uh, it has been cut by the seizure it has it can be cut by the seizures right and the installation process is going on if the tube is then gradually withdrawn leaving behind the weak drains in the clay deposit it has been left behind the soil it, it has been left inside the soil recently a special equipment and machines have been developed for the installation of the weak drains to expedite expedite the work to work fastly the latest equipment have also come right so this is about your weak drain installation or construction now we can see what are the advantage of weak drains or the weak drains have the following advantages over the sand drain the question comes how the sand drains differs from the weak drains we can write this uh, at this point in our examination the weak drains have the following advantages over the sand drains the installation of weak drain is quite easy and convenient the equipment is just used is a small drilling is not required to make the holes in the clay deposit as you have seen in case of uh, sand drains we have to make a hole using uh, by using driving the casing and using the auger right and after that we have to fill the sand but here drilling is not required so that is also a major advantage that's why it is uh, easy and uh, convenient also the drainage is good once the pore water enters the weak drains there is little resistance to flow that means once it is uh, put inside the earth right what is going to happen due to the pre compression or due to the surcharge field on the ground the horizontal movement of pore water takes place and it uh, uh, finds the ways uh, through the weak drains and come on the ground surface and finally it discharges through the granular blanket or the sand blanket okay so here it said the little resistance to flow so as compared to the sand drains the water flow very fastly in vertical direction in upward direction the weak drains also increase the tensile strength it uh, works as a soil reinforcement as we know that soil is uh, weak in uh, weak in tension and strong in compression so it uh, the tensile strength is also going to improve okay so it uh, works as a soil reinforcement the weak drains are less extensive than sand drains this is 